Hey, what's up guys? It's Seb from Workbench, and this week we're gonna take a look at making something interesting in Cineware. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to create the Cinema 4D portion in order to bring it into After Effects. So I'm gonna start off by creating some text, and I did that with just a regular text object this time around. You could certainly do that with the MoGraph text object, but I just did a regular text object. And then I stuck that into an extrude object, and then I put in a Voronoi fracture. Now in here, I have two point generator distributions, one that's creating my bigger breakup, and then I have one down here at the bottom that's just creating these little little extra bits. So the next thing I did was I went into my effectors tab and I created a random. And then I have just a linear field, but you can easily do this in R19 with a linear fall off. And I just have the linear field and I animated that going from one side to the other. Let me turn that back on so you can see it. So if you look here, my linear field is just animating from one side to the other. And then I added a simple camera move here by creating a null at the center point. And then I just did a rotation keyframe. So it just rotates around. So that's it for the Cinema 4D portion. Now Joe is going to take you through the After Effects setup. So what's cool about this technique is we're actually kind of using After Effects as Cinema's renderer. So in After Effects, we have this thing, which is pretty neat. And it's built out of a few different Cinema layers using the Cineware effect. One note, I think the latest version this actually works on is Cinema 20.057 because I've spent all day upgrading my Hackintosh to High Sierra, uh, the latest version of After Effects, the older versions of After Effects. I didn't upgrade Cinema because it didn't even, it, it just was crazy. It's too much stuff. So be careful if you're on 20.059 because this might not work. However, it does seem to work on PC for some reason. So I don't know, it's only Mac, I guess. We've tried it on a couple of different computers and they all have the same issue. One thing to note, when you are in one of these layers, uh, like this one, if you click on your cinema layer and you have your Cineware effect, you go into options, make sure to set this to your actual version of cinema that you're using. For this tutorial, we're using R20 because you have to, because we're using fields. And that's my the root of my problem in this thing. In our case, we're setting these to R20 because that's what we're using, because we're using fields. But as Sev said earlier, you can use R18 with a modified technique. Anyway, when you hit OK on this thing, it's going to ask you to restart After Effects and Purge and all that kind of junk. Just follow that stuff. If you're in the unfortunate case like me, when you do that, it will tell you that this will not link to your cinema because it puts like this Cineware effect into your uh, Maxon folder for R20. And if for some reason your version is incorrect, like ours was, the Cineware effect will be for version 19 instead of 20 or 20.1. And if you think you can outsmart it by copying one from another version, don't do that because it just doesn't work. It gets overwritten every time. You can lock the file, but that still doesn't help it. It, it just don't, just don't. All right, so let's cancel because I don't want to have to restart this thing. And let's take a look at how this thing is composited. So you see that we have our cinema scene in here and we have our Cineware effect. And this one in particular is set to use standard. So we're using the actual rendered version as you would set it up in cinema. And that actually, I believe, also will use your actual render settings. So if you use standard or physical or whatever kind of render you're using, it'll use that. In this case, we wanted to apply a texture to this. So it looks like this without it. You can see it's just got the shading. So in order to make that stick, we actually grabbed the camera out of here using the extract at the bottom of the Cineware effect. And we applied that to a 3D JS placement layer. And that is set to multiply. And we're using this preserved transparency box so that we get the transparency from the C4D file. So what's neat about that is that it lets us basically stick this texture to this shape. I believe the texture is actually halfway in between the thickness of this uh, extruded letter, but it gives it kind of an interesting look as if the letters are like glass or something like that with a uh, texture in between. So another thing that's interesting about this, you can kind of get the wireframe look from the default look of cinema, kind of like if you did an OpenGL render. And this will match what you have set for your viewport shading. So in this case, we're using Garad with lines. And in certain modes, like if you set this thing to use OpenGL, you can actually get it without the background. And so initially when we built this, it wasn't working because of kind of the issues with that Cineware effect, because this was built on my workstation and not on my laptop. But when I messed with it on there, I realized that the uh, fields and everything actually did work in Cineware. It just took all day to figure out why. So anyway, as I've just discovered, you can turn this back to OpenGL and it actually will keep everything like we need it. So basically we just took these things, put them in this broke comp, or actually this broke text, and I was using this thing as a stencil alpha layer, but now I can turn that off because I don't need it. You can see we're just adding over the top wireframes. I have it inverted so that we get white wires over top of everything. And we're doing something kind of interesting that we used on a project recently. 
which are going to absolutely destroy with their changes. Anyway, uh, so we're going to take this thing and we're going to crush it down with levels. And then we're going to use the same thing basically on top of that with a color dodge, which brings out a lot of the texture that's in here. And then we're going to add our wireframe look on top again. And then I have an adjustment layer in here that's set to choke. And that just brings in the edges of these lines just because it gets a little funky around the edges there. So I just brought it in by a pixel. And from that, we brought it into this broke comp through this noise on top using add, put a background behind it. And technically I don't need this like this anymore because we're not using the stencil alpha. But anyway, I have a glow on here, so we'll just keep it, whatever. So that's it. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe because we do one every week. And if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. If you like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench and make sure to keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. As always, I'm Joe. We'll see you next week. Bye.